Have you ever wanted to create your very own game? I mean like completely from scratch so that you can flex to all your friends. I mean I've personally had the dream of creating a game and then bragging to my friends saying I made this. But was the thought of having to learn to code making you not want to do it? Well if you said yes to that then don't worry because today I will show you how you can create a game with no code. And yes that's not a lie, you will legit be able to make your first game with no coding. Also this video is sponsored by Core so make sure to check them out below, they're really awesome. For those who don't know, Core is a game creation platform that lets you play and create games. Ok so in this video I will be focusing on using Core to make our game, but technically you could use whatever you want. So the first step is go to the link below and download Core. Don't worry, it's completely free. It will also probably ask you to make an account, but that's also free and really simple. You just need an email and a password. Once it's downloaded, just double click this exe and go through the installation process. Core is actually built on top of Unreal Engine, so you may also need to install Epic Games. But don't worry, the installation menu will walk you through it. Once it's installed, just click launch and open it up. Ok, so when you first launch it, you will end up being in this hub area. Just press escape and exit it. Now we see many things, but all we're interested in is this create button. Click this. And then press this big orange button to create a new game. Now here's where it gets interesting. You can either choose an empty project or a gameplay framework. Both are good and work fine, it just depends on if you want to start from real scratch or with some things already created. So what I'm going to do is walk you through both. Let's for instance click this racing game. Give it a name and press create. So there is a lot going on, but here's a quick rundown. This main view is well the view of the scene. Here you will control different objects and move things around to build your level. On the right we have the hierarchy. This will display every object that's in your scene. Right below it is the properties menu. If you select something in the hierarchy, the properties of that object will display below. It's basically an area where you can edit things to do with the object. Down below we have the asset browser as well as other menus like the event log, script debugger and community content. Because we won't be writing any code, we're mainly interested in the core content and community content tab. Finally at the top we have the play button as well as other tools to help us manipulate our objects. This will look exactly the same even if you made an empty project by the way. So since we chose a framework I recommend pressing play at the top and seeing what it currently does. Basically familiarise yourself with it. Ok so with the frameworks pretty much everything is made for you and it's just about going through what's already here and changing them to your taste. Whether it's materials, colours or other aesthetic things it's pretty easy to do. You may also want to select certain objects slash settings in the hierarchy and alter their properties. For now I will go into an empty project though so I can show you how to actually create something. Don't worry though, if you chose a template you can still follow along and use the things I'm going to show you. So a couple basic things you're going to need to use is gameplay settings. If you open this folder that by default should be in the hierarchy, you can see three things. Firstly the game settings. These are basically settings for your game. It's pretty basic and goes over things like ragdolls, player storage and a bunch of other things related to your game. I suggest going through this and changing it to what you like. Next we have bindings. Just leave this as it is unless you really want to change the controls which I personally don't recommend. Finally you will have a folder most likely called third person camera settings. By default your game will be in third perspective. But if you don't want this you can simply delete it. Then go into the core content and search for first person camera. And finally drag it under the gameplay settings. After you have the camera you want, open it up and click on it and change its options. These options basically change the way your character works, like its speed, acceleration, gravity and more. Two more things that you will see in the hierarchy is the spawn point. Pretty simple, it's where your player spawns and once again you can change its settings and place it wherever you want. And finally the default sky folder. This folder will include three items, the sky dome, light and sunlight. You can either directly edit those or choose any of the preset skies found in the core content. If you decide to use a different sky, just delete the current one and drag the new one in. Ok so as I mentioned previously, objects and models can be found in the core content. Either search for specific things or use the tab on the right to browse the different categories. Once you find something you like, just drag it into the scene. When in the scene you can use WASD while holding right click to move around. To change the object's position, just click on it and use the arrows to move it. And to scale an object you can press R or click this. Finally for rotation just press E or click this. Once again you can change the item's properties on the bottom right. You may also want to change its position, rotation or scale here, it's up to you. To apply materials to the object, either go into the materials tab inside of core content and drag the material onto the object. 
or go into its properties and select it from here. Quan not only has blocks but also particles, sounds and decals. They all work in the same sense of dragging them into the scene and then playing with its properties. For sound effects, make sure to scale them to the size you want them to cover. Essentially, most sounds will play as long as you're in this box, but always refer to its properties as they tend to kind of explain how things work. For UI, once again, simply drag whatever UI texture you want into the scene. These can be found in core content. With these, you will now see this 2D sort of view where you can control the images you've just dragged on. This is basically your 2D canvas that will hold all your UI objects. So for your game to actually be a game, you need some mechanics. These can be found under the Game Objects tab. Core has created a bunch of items to help you build your game with no code. These range from team scores, kill zones, player launchers, loot spawners and more. Once again, you can just drag these in. Their settings can be edited on the right side within the Properties tab, just like everything else. Every mechanic is slightly different, but it's super simple to edit them. Most things will work from the get-go with no settings needing to be changed, like this door. But for instance, if you're using things like kill zones, you'll need to scale them to the size you want them to cover. Once again, you can do this with the R button or by clicking this. What I usually do when using a new mechanic is go into its properties tab and play around with its settings to see how it functions. It may also be a good idea to access the core documentation, which explains how things work. Okay, so the cool thing about Core is you can create something and upload it to the Community Content tab. For us, this is super useful because we can open it up and search for different mechanics we want, and maybe someone has created it. For instance, this FPS meter. Simply click Import, then Yes, and you can now find it under the Core Content tab in Imported Content. The Community Content doesn't always have to be mechanics, but different builds, sound effects, and more. This is really useful, and before making anything yourself, just check out if someone hasn't already done it. Once you've created the game you wanted, you can simply click Publish Game in the top right. Fill in the information, take some screenshots with the screenshot taker, and review and publish. Then either on your profile or inside of your project, you can press play to test the game out. It's super simple and straightforward. And for those asking, yes, the game gets published to the platform, and unfortunately you cannot export it. Okay, so I feel like adding this in here as not everyone will be familiar with these, but essentially there is plenty of different resources you can use to help you make your game. I very quickly previously mentioned the core documentation. This is basically a document that goes over everything core can do. It has specific tutorials to help you with things and also goes over different objects explaining how they work. Apart from this, there is a core forum where you can freely ask questions and get answers from others. I suggest using this as your question has probably been answered before, so check it out, it's super helpful. And if not, simply ask the question yourself. There is also an entire core API system. This is super useful if you're actually scripting in core, but if not, then don't worry about it. And finally, the core Discord is super helpful with specific chats going over different things. And that's it, you've made your game. I know there might have been a lot, but genuinely, it's pretty easy. When I first used Core, it took some time to actually understand how it worked, but once you get it down, you'll be good and solid. Of course, once you're ready, you can also create your own scripts and mechanics and take your games to the next level. But that is it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out Core with the link down below, it's completely free and awesome. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!